Esters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour. And we're looking at the Dow up very sharply up 548. I just want to, if I can, it's a little slow, the platform. That's, what can I say? So just look at this. The uh, This is the 10-minute E-mini chart. Just from about 5.30 this morning, the uh, E-mini e S&P goes from the 3720s to the day's high so far of 3777. And that was after a massive move overnight. So I had a, a um, I have an indicator called the Chapman Wave Trin Gauge. It's based on Richard Arm's um, short-term trading index. I, I don't even remember anymore how he uses it. I know how it's made up, but I don't remember how he actually uses it. But all I know is that I use it only on certain numbers. If it goes above a certain number, it means within two sessions, the E-mini is going to have a very, the S&P E-mini is going to have a very strong move to the upside, which should help the markets, even if there's a sharp move down first. It just tells you, be careful, because there could be a really good counter trend rally. And if it's very low, for for decades now, we've been looking at it, and it is it says that if the trend gauge intraday makes uh, a low but certain, uh, I'd say below a certain number, then there's a really good chance. In fact, it's up in the 90% area that the Dow will, in fact, be negative that day. Usually, the next morning, but it can happen intraday. Or every once in a while, if it's after few after the options expiration on a Friday, it either happens on that Friday or that Monday. That's the those are the few times that it'll be incorrect. But what has happened periodically, and often enough, is that we've seen the Dow up hundreds of points in the futures, and then hundreds of points into morning, and then. It gives back almost everything. Sometimes it goes negative. Sometimes it goes to just like a plus 19 or plus 32 and then rallies back again. I think today is one of those days where it's not going to uh, pull back. I mean, after all, it's, it was up 600 points the Dow at some point. So I don't think it's going to give back more than a couple of hundred if it does that. But I've got to be ready. And that's what I said to subscribers to my opening call. Um, for any positions that we've missed that we wanted to get in and we just missed or we had been in but got stopped out, didn't get back in. This is the moment that if there is a pullback, we want that opportunity. We've done it on one position that we've been wanting. I uh, haven't had any position in it for a long time. It's one of those stocks that was just absolutely decimated down almost 90% or maybe it was 90%. And uh, it's in the area that if there's some kind of a comeback, that should work. So, yes, we just bought that I, I almost at the – I never like to get the low of the day, especially under these conditions because as you – I have an expression. As you as you tap – as you take your hands off the wheel to pat yourself on the back, that's when you hit the tree. And that's what I'm a little nervous about here. But I've got it. We've got a stop in place, and that's all I can say. So far, it's rebounded strongly from the entry point. That's just not the issue. And, and I see that the actual platform is all of a sudden slowing down. It doesn't matter. What we are looking at is the 10-minute E-mini made a peak E, pulled back quite sharply. I said to uh, – I popped it into the den and said the 37.58 and then 37.52 level are key support. It took out the, both those levels. It went down to about 37.46 or 7, and now it's come back to 37.64. Look at the quick moves here. Um, and basically what we're looking at is the speed from Thursday's turnaround to that very ugly Friday has just taken anyone who wanted to get long and was getting nervous, kept them very nervous. And then the spike today says, now what do I do? What do I do? What do I? Well, all you do is you put in your, uh, put in your, buy, your buy, you put in your stop, 
and you just if it comes down to the area that you want to buy another thing that i was going to do i was going to do it yesterday i was going to do it today and i think that was the actual plan that should have uh, been in place was that for anything missed or anything that we really wanted to get was to have a split position you have a, a position at this crazy opening but then you also have a position lower down and quite a bit lower down saying you know what i'll i want this particular issue and the only way is I want to step in. If I step in with only part of half of my position, I don't mind if it goes up. I prefer the whole position. But if I do get the whole position, it has to be ASAP. It has to be so that the second position is just as as you get it, it's got to be reversing back up again. You you don't want to get it and have that position close at the low of the day. Now you've got two positions that are losing. So you've got to be prepared that if you're going to split the position, uh, either you put two stops in or you, whatever, you've got to work it out that way. But that is another way of at least getting your foot in the door. All right, now let's go back to our story. I've got crude oil here down two and a half at 82.89. And I'd be worried about, I thought crude oil was acting so well as it was testing the um, Chubb Wave Inside Track repellent zone. And, and that, look at this, those are those two lines, the green and pink mini channel in a larger down channel. And it got reversed at a peak B and it's pulled back sharply. Last time it reversed at a peak C minus. And that's always a clue that you've got to be careful because if it did break out and if crude oil was trading at 93 to 95 over the last four sessions instead of way down here at 82, 10 points lower um, than that where it stopped at just recently, um, that's just not a good sign. But for the market, it might be a good sign in the sense that it says you haven't got that extra weight of, of crude oil spiking higher. On the other hand, it's also telling you that maybe the economy is slowing down such that now it's impacting uh, crude oil as well. Okay, let's run these numbers. Here we go. I did that in the update, market update at 10. Let's do it again. INDU. There you go. Uh, a nice move up, 578 in the Dow at 30,766 up 1.92%. Uh, I, I don't want to talk about the misses. I'm just talking about what, what it is. We are along the Dow, the Dow through the diamonds. Uh, yes, this is a move that you can see. This is the, I was talking about this yesterday, that there are patterns that the lowercase h can go to a lowercase m. Not if it, if it pushes decisively above the arch high, in this case, 30,454 back in early October, then it made a slightly lower low. And that says, yep, the M pattern is viable, but if it closes nicely above that left side high, you've got the cup formation. And I showed you yesterday, there's this Chapman wave inside. Uh, this is the inside wedge target resistance line I made. it. I said I'm making a, th a thick green line rather than a dashed line. And here we are above it. And that says the 30,454 high that was out there on the left side back in September. That's the resistance I'm looking at. And it says that by... I was being a little bit uh, conservative. I was saying by the 25th of October, we're, at, uh, we're this is not even the 20th, so we're on the 18th, got about a week to go. We should be testing the 30,454 level. That's still in play, but the stochastic's only at 68%. I'd love for it to be at the 80% or higher level. I'd love for the nine period moving, nine period, oh, it is. So the nine period moving average, you can see it says L, that's long. Uh, that's the first time in months that it has crossed positive. So this is a good sign, but the day is young. Let's see if it stays positive all the way through the rest of the day. Wow, and you got to the Dow, I've got a lot to do. We've got a lot to do. I'll be right back. A lot of questions, and we'll deal with that as soon as I return. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, we're back. Uh, let me just, I need to clear, get all those numbers done. But there's a Chapman Way Peak C1, C2 right here in the one minute chart. Could be pulling back. Remember, in Chapman Wave, we're going to go for at least a peak D in a buy signal to buy mode. Well, we got that at 9.30. We got that peak D. <clears throat> My thinking is that we pretty much made some kind of a very short-term top. I'm talking about near term. I'm talking about in the minutes charts, not in the daily chart. And that if there is a pullback under 37, <clears throat> 37.44 at any point, I think that it's going to take a whole new generation we're talking intraday of buyers uh, i shouldn't say generation then i should say a, a, a new slew of buyers but the people who bought at the open um could be trapped at least for a little while to make them nervous but i think that the turnaround that started on thursday morning is a viable turnaround i think it's here for the uh intermediate term short to intermediate term and unless there's some kind of a news event that takes the Dow back under 29,500, let's say 29,300. Uh, there should be higher highs and higher lows. Doesn't tell you how high, doesn't tell you how other things tell you that, but that's the way it's looking right now. The weekly chart needs a lot of work to repair all the damage, certainly the monthly as well. So let me just continue here. I can't even remember where I left off. I'll just do it real quickly. S&P leg B, uh, up 66 at 37.44. The big challenge will be to get to the 30, The high today so far is 37.62. I think the 30, 37.70 is where you're going to see a whole new bunch of buyers come in. If we can get there and hold there for 90 minutes to two hours, that's going to make a big difference. I want to go straight to the VIX index and explain something that I'm looking at. I've been talking about it for a little while. The patterns that I look at, I've had webinars on this where I talk about the narrow rectangle and the wide rectangle. In this particular instance, where the volatility, remember, I guess I better just do this uh, if I can find it here. Let me go to the my newsletter here, and then we get click on that. Okay, there it is. Move it away, and we're going to go right here. In the patterns that we look at, actually, I'm going to go one, one, one further. 
We try to identify in the Chapman Wave methodology a low that is the low. You don't know if it's the low until it starts to move higher. But from that starting position, you want to see a strong leg A and then a pullback maybe, but it mustn't take out the low. The moment by one penny, if you take out the starting point, you have to start all over again. But you can chop around your starting peak A, B, and then pull back, make another A, B, but not a new recovery high. And it can go on. The longer it stays that way without taking out the left side low, the greater the chance when it gives the buy signal, it's going to go very quickly to a buy mode and go to at least D and probably go even higher. In the Chapway methodology, we look at the – we. we alphabetize and essentially grade each higher peak and a peak is just that it's like an inverted v and what happens is it's alphabetical sequentially uppercase and the way up a b c d you can even go e f and g it never goes to an h it looks you'd have to think that it could have recycled at d that's where you get your greater chance of a very sharp pullback. It can go to E, but that's where you got to raise your foot off the accelerator, hover over the brake, and monitor very closely. That's where the easy part of the Chapman Wave methodology is done. Unless within three bars from peak D, it makes a new high, and a new recovery high, that is. And that will give you a chance to be uh, to say that it could be a Chapman Wave instant restart. So it isn't just E, it's E slash A, F slash B, G slash C, and often we get to a G, it pulls back, looks like it's going to be a deeper pullback, and then it makes the D for the second buy signal to buy mode, and then it pulls back sharply. Anyway, D is your objective, and here we are. Look, there's a peak D. They went to an E, and the VIX index pulls back sharply, uh, and then rallies again, alternate count, uh, F slash A, G slash B, the G says C, and then it goes to the D, 34.88. pulls The flagpole pulls back sharply and then rallies quickly back again to just about 34, I think it was 58 or something, just under the previous high. But look at the measurement. Look on the left side. Let me get out of this and go to uh, this chart right here. So there's a pattern that I call the H pattern. It can have an arch that goes all the way back to the previous high, but basically what you're looking at is in this large rectangle, there's a rally that goes to the previous high, goes just under, right on or just above, but the technicals are failing. And therefore, it says, be careful because you can come back. And if you come back halfway, which is what we've done right now, halfway into the rectangle midpoint, Instead of the cup formation that you had, you've now alternated and you're going to go to an arch formation. Instead of the cup, you're coming to the arch. That's the dreaded H pattern. Watch out because if you take out halfway, you can go all the way to the low. And if you do that, you're probably going to take that low out. So that's the story, and that's the reason why we've been wanting for, for a week and a half. We've just been buying the diamonds and, and either taking a little bit of a profit, a little bit of a loss, but we've wanted to be in. And um, in this particular instance, the VIX index, the day is young. It's down only 53 cents at 30.84. It should be down at 29.90 right now with the, with the market this high. But the buying intensity of insurance is so high that it's keeping the volatility index high. And uh, the volatility index is made up of uh, the futures. But to me, it's just the price. It's like the, the Chapman Wave trend gauge. I don't care about the makeup. Of course, I understand the makeup. I don't care about it. I just worry about the price or I, I focus on the price. And in this case, if the VIX index at 30.89 down 48 cents actually starts to rally and goes back to 31, it's going to put selling pressure on, on the market. And I anticipate that today is a very special day because the Chapman Wave uh, trend gauge really doesn't work. I mean, we're talking about, I, I haven't really checked it out, but it, was, it wasn't about 97% accuracy rate over the last uh, 10 years or so. I think that's changed a little bit because of the makeup of the market on those crazy options expiration days that have made the trend either pull back very sharply to a very low number or the following session like we saw yesterday, and there's an aberration unfolding. But in this particular case, I think that we've got to monitor that because if by the end of the day, because you could still have the sell-off and then another rally later in the day, if the volatil volatility index actually trades under 30.30 .30 at any point today, that's going to give another burst of energy. I'm thinking, and I, I mentioned this in the den, that there was that this peak E, 
Uh, I didn't do the measurement. I should have done it. I'll do it right now. I did it visually. I haven't done it physically. There it is. You see this 10-minute chart in the E-mini? Right there. And everything's slow. And right there, well, look at this. Look at the MACD and stochastic and on balance volume, how powerful they were right there at that peak D. Then it pulled back and by a fraction it went to 3777.25 right there at peak E at uh, 9.58 or 57 or something like that. I'll tell you right now what it was if I can get this to move. There it is at 940. And a look at the difference. Now we've gone to a leg to the downside. So gone from 37.77 down 33 points. I uh, don't tell me that that isn't Jeffrey Page working his magic, but not magic enough because I can't see it going negative by the end of the day. I'll be back. This is what a pattern I drew in as I was talking to you. I drew in the left side, right side price time match. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I post a gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So let me just show you. This is a technique I, I demonstrate here very often. I've had webinars on it for years and years and years. So what we're looking at is this price time match. Remember, bar symmetry. I've had, as I, as I say, I've had webinars on this bar symmetry. The number of bars on the left can equal the number of bars on the right. It doesn't have to be a crash or an acceleration. It's just a steady move up. And it's the, the reason why it's always mystifying to me <clears throat> as to uh, why there are instant, not, it, hey, let me put it this way. The mystification to me of when people say that when the markets come down, they basically they crash down and when they go up or the elevator up and the staircase up or elevator down, whatever it is, um, I most of the time that does not happen. If you do enough charting, 
you'll see that absolutely that's true, but it's only in certain circumstances. I mean, look at the look at the right side of this uh, ten minute chart. Look how quickly we've come down when we were walk, walking the staircase up. But look at this chart right here. This is the one minute chart. Doesn't matter. It could be a daily. It could be a monthly. Does, the, the charts are the charts. It doesn't know it's a one minute chart. It's just a chart following the price movement of a particular time. And look at this. It goes from that level and goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 uh, at bars up. It goes to peak C1. Just fails by 25 cents to make a peak D. But it had the little ictus right there that matched it. So I put a C1, C2, which and I put a red plus sign, which indicates that it acts exactly like a D. Be careful because it could come down sharply. It went above the pink 200 period moving average, comes down, and then... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 bars. Exactly. It takes out the left side low. Isn't this a fantastic technique? You don't need the arch. You don't have to type it in. You don't need the, um, uh, the, pa the horizontal line. You don't need the vertical line. You could have just gone anything. I'm sure everybody has something that you can type. You could just put in an O right there as a midpoint. And you could have typed in an X over there to say, that's where I expect that to, to happen. What well, it has. And isn't it remarkable that now the S&P is only up 50 when it was up, uh, what, about almost 100, I believe it was. Uh, yep. Yeah. And... Um, and it looked like, oh, my God, where, where's this market going to go? And all of a sudden, you get your peak D and you get your peak E failure with the, the, the technicals deteriorating on the right side, even though it made a new recovery high. And now look where it is. It's pulling back very sharply. So these are techniques that I like to use. Uh, I, I explain them to my subscribers. Uh, I use them all the time. And uh, now what we're looking at is if there's going to be a left side, right side price time match in the VIX index, would you consider that from this low here, you go one, two, three, four, five, six bars up, one, two, three, four, this is the fourth bar down, uh, would it take, well, this is the volatility index. It's a different instrument altogether. It has to do with emotion. It has to do with a bunch of things. And look, now it's only down 21 cents. So there are certain times where you want to use these things as if it's a mathematical formula. And there are other times where you say, I'm just going to follow this. And all I can do is say, this is the pattern that says this arch formation with weaker technicals on the right side, same as that 10-minute chart. This is a daily chart. It doesn't know it's a daily chart. 34.88 was the high around about the 27th or 8th of um, September. It comes back, and on the 11th or 12th, it tries to get to a higher high, and it fails. Let me just get rid of this in case you can see and you think that that's actually a candle. Nope, there it is. And this time, look, the MACD is a little bit weaker. The stochastic's quite a bit weaker, under well, well under 80%. And this is where you should start to see the arching over. And in the the rule of thumb for me in the Chapman Wave methodology is that after the rectangle formation, when it starts to come back, if it either goes just under, right on, or just above the previous high, and then comes back and takes out a halfway point, and I'll make it just, let me do it visually right here. So 3171, we're under the halfway point. That says be careful because you could come all the way back to the base, and that would say the VIX index could come back to the 2850 level, and then maybe the market on the upside is done, and we're going to start to see something else. Or well, other things can happen. All right, I wanted to get that out of the way. Let me just go back to crude oil. <clears throat> Look at that move down. Crude oil uh, is trading at 81.74, down 370. Look at this. Lower lows and lower highs in the weekly chart. It looked as if it was going to break on Sunday night a week ago. I had a special, uh, I had my market overview uh, video that I was going to put out Saturday. There was a technical problem. I put it out Sunday and I said, it's unusual, but I'm going to do this just in case we're looking at the XLE and the crude oil generally as holding a lot better and actually taking out the upside. Look, the XLE, that's the S&P Select Energy Spider Fund, is holding pretty well near the highs of the recent highs, not the all-time highs of 
uh, or at least the most recent of 93.31 back in June, but it did drop to under, under 70. I mean, that's a huge move down, right? Or 28 to 30%. And then it rallies very sharply back to the high and now it's towards the high. Well, they are in many ways separate vehicles. Crude oil is crude oil. Energy takes in all sorts of other things, multinationals, uh, oil service, just everything to do with energy. Um, as well, I'm, I probably I should check it out. It probably even has the solar energy as well. So this is very different. But in a sense, they are in the same category of energy. And uh, But they are doing different things. And it was looking like energy was holding very well because it kept holding this catch up wave up channel inside track support and then pushing to the upside. Now it's taking just a little bit too much time to go above that peak D in the daily at about 85 and it's at 81.45. So if by Friday you're looking at the XLE and it's able to get to 84.50 or 80, well, what was the high there? I think it was 84.60 something. No, it was 65, um, 85.16. 85.16. So if it's able to get even close to that, that's a big positive. Uh, it's certainly the daily chart, but it helps the weekly chart, monthly chart we have to wait for. So XLE is kind of in play, and that means you've got the very big, the biggies, Exxon Mobil looks like the XLE in some way. Uh, uh, Oxy, Oxy, uh, not not the same. Oxy is uh, looking a little bit more. I wouldn't say like the oil chart, but the crude oil. But look at this; it's it keeps getting repelled at this huge. If I can just get it. Oh, don't be slow. There we go. I've got you. I've got you. Under my spot. Okay, there we go. You see the Occidental, you see this matching in the monthly. Look at look at this beautiful cup formation, second cup formation. Just at the resistance level, it's gone to a peak E in the monthly chart. You can see that, uh, oh, there must be so much buying going on. And now there's selling going on. Oh, is this guy? I can't believe, will this be an, a, a successful Chapman Wave low trend gauge reading? We're already down uh, over... Uh, uh, from the on the high, we only have 390 or something in the Dow. Anyway, so look at this. This is the Occidental Petroleum chart, made uh, lower highs and lower lows. But look how it's just finally gone above. I do the 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 blue and the pink is only to tell you the matching time frames. So now it's making this. Um, it's like a fulcrum consolidation. I'm going to draw it in as if it's a stalk leg formation, right there. And we're going to be watching this closely because these multinational oils, I, I don't think they're going away. I think they, they're they in play here, and that helps the XL. The crude oil is maybe one thing, but the, these multinationals are something else. So we're watching this very closely. That was Exxon, Oxy, and as we're going to the break, why, why am I forgetting? The, oh, CVX. There it is, Chevron. And look at that. Digesting gains. Actually, oh, it's gone to a peak C in the daily. It's the same thing. I'll be back in a moment. Dow is up 395. S&P is up 43. Basil Chapman, Tiger. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks, so we're back, and uh, the e mini in the 10 minute chart pull right back to a foot support level. And what we're looking at now is has most of the damage been done for those people who bought at the open? They've, I mean, some of these stocks, I'm sure, have pulled back a very big percentage from the high of the day. And is it going to make people nervous enough that it doesn't quite get there again, uh, maybe today, but it does in the next couple of days, by which time they'll be really nervous and maybe gotten out already of the, um, of the or whatever it is that they've got. This, the way the market is acting from the low that was made on Thursday, um, especially if a person like me, who really times and watches the market minute by minute every day as much as I can, and we, we either trading or doing whatever it is, um, uh, actually get stopped out and could not get back in until a little later um, from that Thursday position. So I, I'm looking at this and saying, unless you got a bigger picture, which says that the selling has been so intense that it's going to be a very bumpy takeoff, but until the Dow is actually trading in the 31,500s, uh, let me just give you this so I can give you exact numbers. 31, there it is. So the high today is in the Dow. Let me go to the Dow, IND. You, more and more people are now actually trading the Dow before people say, ah, 30 stocks. Let me tell you, these are most probably the 30 most important stocks in the whole of the market. Uh, why? Because they are such a mix. You've got financials, you've got, uh, I mean, Home Depot, you've got, you're in every part of the economy, uh, good and bad, even in uh, insurance, even in uh, what, wall green boots. I mean, you're just everywhere. So it's very important. So if the, if the Dow in the next, any time in October, if the Dow can start to trade, in the 31,300, 500, I mean trade, not just pop and break, but trade there, you've got yourself a beautiful cup formation that says, let me move this away because we're not eating with the monthly chart right now, we're dealing with the daily. The daily is going to help the weekly, and that weekly chart has so much damage that it needs to repair itself, and it's going to take a little while. So it needs to be trading into this ugly candle of the week of September. Was that August? No, no, it was September, I believe. Right there. This this candle right here, I'm looking at the weekly chart in the middle, and that's the week of... Gosh, this is really difficult today. With, I, I, I must ask if... I think it was... What's his name? Dan? I think it was Dan. From Connecticut, I, I mislaid your email. I'm going to have to go back and try to search it in my, uh, in my files. But I have it somewhere, and I put it aside... Because I couldn't find it where you told me how I could uh, re, uh, I could do some adjustments in my trade station platform to be able to mitigate 
this intense uh, lag in the uh, planet. Anyway, the week of the 19th of August at 34,281. That's the, that's that was so that was where that was the we had already gone short. We were, no, we went short right there. Um, we still have that short. I don't want to change it. That's intermediate term. But on a near term basis, we, we're buying. And the most important thing is to be able to get into this candle the 26th of August. 20, yes, 26th of August. And hold there. That's going to be going into the challenge of this down channel, this little mini down channel called Channel Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone, which has been an incredible repellent uh, for so long. We'll have to see. All right. I, I needed to go to the TLT. I keep forgetting every day. Look, the TLT is trading at 98.08. What does that do to the bonds? Well, the TNX, this is the 10-year. Look at this. The 10-year, uh, there's no there's no H in the Chapman Way methodology in the weekly chart. There is a G. I'm going to put it in here as a G just on the daily, and it could be an alternate count. This one could be, I, in fact, I have to do it, a G slash C. Why? Because there was, I believe there was, it just missed Yes, it just missed one, two. Yeah, well, it just missed in the in the high that was made in September the sixth or so. Let me just check the day. September the sixth, yes. At thirty three fifty three, the TNX is ten year T note. Right, there it is. Um we're looking at that is the I I need to just check this cherry note. Oh, forgive me for a moment. I need to just go to this. Everything's so slow. I can't believe it. Okay. So we're going to go right there. Pull it across and just see. Yeah, so this is the TNX is, in fact, look at it. That wasn't, see, within three bars, it was four bars that it made a new high. So that's not a chapter wave instant start, restart. In this case, I have to think of it as maybe I put in a down arrow there and an up arrow there. And what we've done is we've gone to a peak, E slash A, F slash, F slash B, pull back very sharply, gone to a doji, uh, sorry, Chapman Wave reverse uh, candle. This is the Roman candle. And we've gone halfway into the wick. It says there's a good chance we're going to test the high. So the G slash C, and there should be a higher high. But look, in the weekly chart, there is no, <clears throat> there's your peak D. Oh... Uh, Oh, oh, but I, I can't make things up, so I, I have to be very careful here. There is a chance that is, this is a maybe a B, or I haven't. I'm going to do some work tonight on the on this. What what do I really think, just based on all the technicals that I use in the Chapman Wave methodology? Is this a B in the weekly chart, or is it perhaps something else? But it's a D in the monthly chart. But what's happening is that the yields are up at the highs. So the market in the moment is 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 ignoring that. The mo the market itself. What I'm looking at is I think we might have completed the move to the downside. Almost. This is I'm going back to the market now. I'm just saying yields are going higher, and in the longer term, it looks to me like yields are going higher based on the on the monthly chart until we get a peak D, which is a lower high, and then a very sharp pullback. And then I got to consider that something else is happening in the bonds that maybe we're actually looking at yields starting to improve. Wouldn't that be something? And if you put it together, look, here's my DBA, my DBA. This is the DBA, which we've had since 13.77 two years or so ago. And it's screamed up to 23. It's pulled back to 19. And it's come back again. Now it's got the PD and an arch formation in the weekly chart. That's not good. Isn't this telling us that the agricultural side is very much uh, under pressure. Yeah, we are long from just off the low. 1325 was the low in June 2020. Very soon after that, we went long and we're still long. It's like you know, the dollar in 2020, we got the dollar as well, DXY. We still long the dollar. Um, there it is. Look, the dollar, we, we went, hey, what happened to that? Oh, it was right here. We went long right there back in uh, April of 2020. 
March was the low of 88.25. We watched it go all the way to 102.9. And yes, we've taken one little bit off at 96, then watched it pull back. Didn't get stopped out of the UUP. We're still in it. This is a, a late C in the monthly chart of the dollar. It should still go to a D, but short term, it's making an R formation. So I've, I've covered a lot. I've said that the bond deals are going higher. I want to see if some kind of an intermediate term low in the daily, I'm talking about the intraday, is being made here so that we can start to move a little higher later in the day. I'll be back. Are you grinding in the market but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, uh, folks. A question came in about uh, Venom Viper Energy Partners. Yeah, this is the same pattern. Hasn't gone above the previous highs that were made back in April, May in the 35, 36 area. Uh, pulls back very sharply to 25. That's a 10. I mean, that's 30 percent decline. Then it runs up A B, a uh, little double top right here. It's holding well at 32.13. I would just say, if you're on a short term oriented, at 32.13, if it closes under 31, it could come down quite a bit. If you're more intermediate term, I would just be holding this. I wouldn't fuss in and out. Look, the monthly charts making high highs, higher lows. This is doing perhaps an arch formation within the rectangle of the weekly. I'd be holding it. I, I, so far, I think it's holding quite well. So this is what I want to say. So a question came in 
a number of questions. I'll deal with some of them tomorrow. They were just general questions, and I can deal with that tomorrow. I wanted to go through a bunch of things in pattern recognition today. So Amazon, I'd said the other day, maybe uh, that I'd spoken about 135. You could nibble. That was way back. Just a, a, just a touch to get a feel for it. But when it was going down to the 105 area, I said, and it rallied, I said, uh, yes, you could enter. A, a, now you could start your position. But even this, I would have a tight stop. And then yesterday I said, now it's acting much better. So it's rallied to 116.70 at this point. It hit 119 earlier on. Yes, this is, if you're looking at the chance of a more intermediate term, Amazon must, especially going into the season, uh, holiday season, it needs to rally. I was going to do something with the RTH today. I'll do that tomorrow. It's the retail sector, et cetera. But yeah, Amazon is in play to try to move higher, but I wouldn't get too carried away. I'd just maybe... Had, this is a little starter position, a real starter position. But even there, I would have 110 stop. I wouldn't get too carried away. Let it, let it rally. So this is very important. If the VIX index trading at 30.69 right now, by the end of the day, we've already had a big pullback from the high. But if the volatility index is holding steady and goes above 31.30, that's going to say there's still selling pressure. If all of a sudden it goes to 30.40 or lower by, by this afternoon, that's a good sign. I think we're consolidating off the huge.